All right. Hey, everybody. This is Scott with Seriously Tech Stuff. How are you doing? Like, seriously, how's it going? Leave some comments below. Let's talk about it. But until then, let's talk about this controller. This is the GameSir G7 SE with Hall Effect sticks and triggers. Now, Hall Effects is a different mechanism for movement. It uses a magnetic field and a sensor. So the, these actually are not touching anything that tells the console which way you want to go. So therefore, they don't wear out. I could leave a link to a video that explains all of that stuff. But what's important right now is that you won't get stick drift with these. So if anybody's ever had one of these, you've probably had stick drift. Now, that's when you're not aiming, but yet your gun keep kind of goes, and eh, starts to go to the right. Like, what are you doing? Or if you're in cover and you kind of just start to slide to the right, you know, like that, or up, or, you know. So it's really annoying, especially for a $60, $70 controller. This, on the other hand, retails for $49.99. It's on sale for $44.99. So I picked one up and thought I would give it a try because I've been playing a lot of Dragman, Dragon's Dogma 2 and it is recommended to use a controller. And believe it or not, I recommend it as well. Okay, first off, how it feels. It does have a very similar shape to the regular Xbox Series X controller. One thing I like about this though is that it's a little thinner a little bit thinner, not quite as chunky on the the palms. And also the angle right here is, as you can see, a little bit wider than this one. I, I think this is a great controller. I just don't understand why this slant is right there. It's probably for like smaller, like kids' hands or something. I don't know. I'm sure they know more about ergonomics than this guy. But this actually feels a little better to me. So... The top part is a smooth kind of eggshell feel to it. And you've got the seam right here that goes into a texture, which I'm gonna try to show you right now if my camera will focus. I'm slow lately. Come on, focus, there we go, see? And then it goes back into smooth on the back right there, which is good because your fingers tend to kind of move on the back of it and you don't want it, you know, being rough. Now, the top buttons, the shoulder buttons, are focus, glossy here, and then have a slight texture on the bottom along with the triggers, which I like. I like the texture on the triggers. It kind of feels better and a little bit more grippy. Okay, now the sticks, I'm not super fond of this kind of rubber texture. As you can see, it does have, it's, it is textured on the sides, much like a regular Xbox uh, stick, but it doesn't have that dip. See how that's got the, it's convex, I believe. This is a little more concave. So convex, concave. I hope I got that right. If I don't, I'm sure you'll let me know. But you know what I'm saying. It's, it's domed in the middle, which kind of gives it a weird feel. If it was completely dome, it would be fine. If it was dipped, it would be fine. But the, in, the, in the middle, eh, I, I'm not the biggest fan of, but I can put some, you know, some rubber thumbstick covers on there, and there we go. Okay, so now let's start talking about the buttons. All right, now, let's get this out of the way. Okay, now the buttons. Let, let's talk about these first. And now these are membrane buttons. They're not optical or anything. And listen. They're fine. They're okay. They're not stellar. They have a little bit more play in them than I like. They, it makes them feel just a little mushy. Now the standard controller has a spring back. So when you push it down, it pops it back. 
So when you're doing this, it gives it a little bit more of a tactile feel without being like an actual like optical button. I will show you one that uses optical buttons. This is the Thrustmaster eSwap. And this actually uses optical switches like a mouse click. Listen. Very satisfying. It, uh, I love these buttons. I wish this was on every controller. So. Now, moving on. These, however, feel great. They're very tactile and snappy, even this one. See, snappy. Now the D-pad, the D-pad kind of feels like this. It's it's fine. I mean, I'm, honestly, I'm not really using a D-pad for anything, but maybe changing weapons inventory or, you know, telling my pawns what to do. But it's, it's fine. It feels perfectly fine. Now, let's talk about the buttons on the back. Because I love back buttons. Now these are made into the back, as you can tell. See how they're kind of... They only come out just a little bit. Just enough to feel them. And they're they're nice. They're not mushy, they're, but they're not clicky. They're kind of in between. Because you're, you're, when you do this, you're pressing. And on the back, you're, you're squeezing. And when you, you think about that, it's like, no, I'm not. Well, then pick up your controller, do it, and you're like, oh, I'm totally squeezing it. So it has a different feel to it, and it has a different, of course, uh, placement and size. And, okay, and these have locks. And what that does is it completely locks them out. So it's, it doesn't disengage them. It just, you can't push them. So when you pick it up, you're you're not like clicking, clicking, clicking. Or if you don't like them, then it's it's like they're not there anymore. Brilliant idea. I like that a lot. I wish there was four, but you know, whatever. Okay. Now moving on to the bottom, you have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. You know, nothing special. I do check the sound. Controllers sound different to me because they have a different processor for the sound. They usually use the one that's you know. Uh, certified by Microsoft, but some of them sound a little bit different. This sounds perfectly fine, but it has a really cool mute button. So you push that, it glows. You push it again, and it goes off. And so, you know, if you have a headset or whatever that doesn't have a mute, or if it's easier to do this instead of find that stupid thing dangling from your cord, then you can push that. And also, while, I'm, while we're on the subject, you can hold down the memory button, and then you got volume up and down, and then side to side is your chat and game. And then you're done. Sweet. Now, all of that is good. I, I, I like I like those added features. That is just fantastic. So, one more thing on this. The back buttons are programmable. You can use the software, which I will show you a little bit later, but well, you can also do it with the button. So what you would do is you would hold down this button, the memory button, you would hold down the button you want to program, at the same time, for three seconds, this will blink. You hit the button you want to program. Done. That's it. You can do it on the fly. You can do it while you're gaming. You can change it. Whatever you want to do. It's it's totally configurable on the fly. Another feature that I really, really like. So let's talk about these sticks. These sticks feel different. I will tell you that. It, they have a different kind of tension on them. And check this out. as another little feature. You can take the faceplate off. It's magnetic. And I'm going to show you, or attempt to show you, the inside of it. If you know what these look like, you can tell it does look completely different. You don't see the little springy stuff, the little potentiometers in there. It, it has a different feel to it. Oh. Let's take that off. I just realized you could probably take that off. Let's see? Isn't that cool? Now you still have the same kind of mechanic of you've got it gyroed, so it's like you've got one going this way, one going this way, and then an addition of all four of them let you to go in any direction. So, But it's the way that it detects the movement that makes it special sauce. So on this, again I'll show you in the software, you can have a dead zone on this to any degree. 
and typically in games that allow you to do the dead zone on a regular controller such as the Microsoft controller I usually set it to like 0.7 or at 7 around around there so it's not completely off it adds a little bit because to me that's what the degree that it starts to basically stick drift now that's not saying that the, you have stick drift in your controller that means that when you get down to the point of there is no movement on this at all until you move it the dead zone is no movement so if you had a very large dead zone you can move it this way and right about there is when it will start moving and then you've got that degree of movement so when you do this you don't move it feels really weird it is it is all wrong it is all bad so the smaller the dead zone the more precise movements you can make what if there was no dead zone you can turn this into raw data just no dead zone just you can breathe on this thing and it will move it is if it takes getting used to and i'm not using this for anything like call of duty or, or halo infinite but i did play call of duty and halo infinite with it and it was very precise very i mean it was very it, it's it makes a difference i can tell you that so the benefits from this is you have that degree of dead zone that you can either get to your liking or eliminate altogether and you don't have to worry about stick drift later on so very much of a benefit the triggers also have hall effects so these aren't these obviously are spring loaded but the tension i mean not the tension but the the register of your movement is magnetic and a sensor so if if you just move it just a hair you're gonna shoot which i'll also show you in the software a little bit later okay so this is the software and this is what you get when you when you plug it in it does have updates i did update the firmware when i first plugged it in so it is at the latest firmware you have three profiles that you can configure uh this is mine to configure add a description which is really cool because you can name them you know whatever you want i don't know how to change profiles i'm just realizing that we'll figure that out together as i look at the software but this software is pretty good for you know just an inexpensive controller uh, of course you got mapping for all of the, you can change all of these uh, and then the sticks this is this is what I like so you've got your this is basically your dead zone right here and you also have this thing called raw which as you can see it disables the outer radial dead zone offering higher precision and speed in some games so if you had this at raw it's just raw data so uh, games like I don't know like Titanfall 2 or Apex Legends where you know pinpointing is is super accurate this may actually benefit uh, I have not tried it yet uh, I'm scared so this you can actually just click that and swap the left stick and d-pad d-pad diagonal lock I mean there's there's nice little touches that you can do to this okay and then you go to the triggers and this is this is really cool so you have your range you know on your right there and you can actually set the maximum so as you can see it's just I'm just barely hitting it but over you, you can hit hair trigger so as you can see it goes 0 to 255 that means that it is like a button it, it's like an optical button it's just bam 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 so I've got this set to normal um, actually I think I'm gonna set that to like 50% uh, and then this one is just pop 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 so as far as like trigger used gunfire you, you don't have to pull it all the way back you just pop it now there's no uh, you know there's no distance stopper on the actual controller I mean it's it's just you know it does have that variable um, there's no degree of uh, you know making it uh, shorter like a shorter physical distance which would be nice but you know again it's it's a $45 controller uh, and then here you can control all of the vibration which is I turned off I'm gonna probably turn all of this off because it's 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 kind of terrible I'm just gonna say but I mean I don't know how much you like 
vibration in your controller. I, I don't care. I really don't really notice it that much. It doesn't really add anything to the game. Maybe for racing games and stuff, but everything else, I usually just turn it off anyway. Uh, and then here, here's your testing lab, if you click on that. And this is cool. You can test everything out. And you can make sure that all the buttons are what they're supposed to be doing. You know, maybe button. Oh, and then even the back buttons. Let me turn the switches off. Da, 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 and it tells you what they're mapped to. Super cool. I like that. You go back. And then you confirm that. But you can set it back to default, which I'm not going to do right now. But that's pretty much it. I mean, this is pretty, you know, hefty software, uh, feature rich for a, an inexpensive controller. I was really impressed with this. And as far as like a contrast or a comparison, <laughs> I'm going to show you Razer's software. Okay, so I'm bringing up, okay, this is the software for the Razer. So right off the bat, it's like, well, what, what do I do? I can't interact with any of this stuff. Uh, oh, okay, so then I go to edit. And here you can, it gives you a little bit more, you know, insight on what you're actually doing. You can assign all the buttons. Uh, it makes this annoying sound. I don't know why, the Xbox sound. Uh, okay, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, dead zone on this. If you have this controller, by the way, go in and it, it's on four. Why? You can't aim. It, you, it's you put it on one and click done. But from here, you can kind of tell. You know, it gives you a little reading. But these are not Hall Effect sticks. These are just regular, plain Jane. Nothing special. It's very possible that they will. You know just go out okay and then yeah, there's your LED stuff so just by comparison you know it, it's fine this is a hundred and sixty dollar controller and the one I just showed you is um, 45 all right well thanks for watching the review for the game sir g7 se Xbox slash PC wired controller I recommend it. I think it's a fantastic controller, especially for the price. And as always, uh, you know, like and subscribe and, and hang out. I'm going to have some more content coming up and hopefully another review soon. And maybe some gameplay of some scary stuff. I don't know. We'll see. Thanks for dropping in. See you next time.